Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog, where we discuss activity going on with the channel, current events, headlines in the news, pop culture, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week. If you're new here to the channel, I want to welcome you here and encourage you to click on that watermark over there in the bottom right-hand corner to subscribe as your participation helps support the channel. So starting it off this week, I just wanted to mention that I took a little bit of a break from video production. I wanted to go back and do some refresher courses to get reacquainted with uh, OBS software, the open broadcast software, and some other platforms that I use to just kind of expand on the production that I'm doing live work. So my gaming friends can anticipate seeing some actual live streaming on YouTube. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so I'm having to do this first segment handheld because I had a bit of a snafu in post-production. We're going to be talking about Mark Meacham, a Scottish YouTuber who goes by the name of Count Dankula, who back in 2016 produced a little video where he was trying to prank his girlfriend. He was making a little bit of a joke by teaching her a cute little pug Buddha, uh, not to be confused with Siddhartha Gatma, how to raise his left paw when the phrase Sieg Heil was mentioned. Now, he taught the little dog how to perform other little tricks, but as you can see in the video, within its context, you can see that he was just joking around by having little Buddha watch like old Hitler films and so forth. So, even after being viewed by over three million people, the video wasn't really taken down till after he was arrested in 2016. This was probably a few months after the video was out. Now, there was no official complaints that he received. Even the Jewish League, I believe, reached out to him. And despite the fact that they found the video distasteful, there wasn't really any need by anyone to really pursue any legal action against him. However, he was arrested and this week, he was charged under the Communications Act of 2003 for being grossly offensive. Now, he could face up to one year in prison from this. Now, you may remember last week we talked about Laura Southern, Brittany Pettibone, and Martin Sellner, who were banned from entering the UK because of thought crimes, because their words could potentially incite and cause harm to others. So now you're going to see here on the screen a tweet from the um, Scottish authorities advising people in the community that if they see something that is offensive or may go towards a certain group or a certain ethnicity or a certain religion or other type offenses, could you imagine if that was here in the United States? The fights and the arguments that go on on Facebook and individuals who are offended by even the slightest little uh, slights and stuff, could you imagine that being here in the States? We're going to keep a close eye on this story to see how it turns out. But here we have an actual first world government who's going after its citizens because of speech. So while we're still in Great Britain, I wanted to bring up a story that you may have heard about on Facebook concerning Cambridge Analytica. They are a information and data harvesting company out of Great Britain. Now recently uh, they were in an undercover investigation by the Channel 4 British News where its CEO Alexander Nix made the claim that his company actually had a huge role and or influence in the election of President Trump in 2016. Now the part of this that is really concerning to uh, the community in general and social media, particularly Facebook, is that they worked with Facebook and Zuckerberg to collect this information from over 50 million Facebook users. Now, I'm going to leave a link down in the published section below so that you can see the expose from Channel 4. Now, there's really a lot of disturbing information here. Now, this is not uncommon or unusual for, say, us in social media who work on YouTube or have businesses online because we're approached sometimes by organizations and businesses that gather this type of information so that we can get our, our uh, work out to uh, uh, communities uh, of individuals or demographics uh, to sell our product or to present our content to other people throughout the internet. So this is, was a really interesting story because um, this could potentially harm Facebook quite a bit. Um, now the platform itself is already in decline and this week we even saw that stocks in um, Facebook has dropped dramatically. But it is interesting to see uh, even Zuckerberg's response to this. But I will leave articles down in the published section below so you guys can check that out. So just be aware, you know you guys that like to do all the little uh, personality profiles and, and recently you saw uh, where you take people's images and convert them from one uh, gender to the next gender, which I'm surprised people haven't complained about and then so other little uh fun facts and um 
information that you do about yourself on there is really just a form of, of data collection by Facebook and these organizations. So you're gonna be, wanna be very mindful about your posting. The biggest story in the headlines here in the US and perhaps the world was that of the Austin, Texas bombing that left two people dead and six injured. Now, the individual suspect was tracked down through surveillance at FedEx, through video surveillance, and the fact that he purchased very exotic or unique batteries to make these particular bombs. Now, the police was able to track him down at Round Rock, a little town just outside of Austin, and essentially what they did was they had him there in the parking lot surveilling him in his vehicle while they were waiting for additional authorities to arrive. Now, while they were waiting for the additional backup, he left the parking lot and was subsequently stopped because obviously they didn't want the man to get away. As police officers approached him, he set off his own bomb, killing himself and injuring one of the officers. Now, as of this recording, the investigation is continuing, but without a doubt, Austin was on edge for over two and a half weeks. And I suppose now they can breathe a little sigh of relief, although authorities are letting people know in the community to still be vigilant with mysterious packages that they cannot identify and to contact authorities if they have any concerns. Guys, I wanted to include one more segment in this series, and this revolves around a Bloomberg article that is stating that YouTube is now going to be banning certain firearm channels. For example, those that show how to use firearms, how to assemble firearms, and those channels that are used to promote certain vendors of firearms. Now, how this is going to affect people or what these particular parameters and definitions are, are a little vague right now because we have individuals like Hickok45 who spent many thousands of dollars to obtain the appropriate license and permits to be able to use firearms on his residence and to demonstrate these firearms that vendors and other organizations send to him to feature on his channel, along with those of Nutton Fancy or the retired colonel from the Air Force who also does responsible shooting and how to safely use firearms, but mostly he does reviews on firearms as well as other survival type gear. And you know, I have two separate videos where I did a documentary on Second Amendment rallies here in the state of Georgia. Now I've had to battle with YouTube to get flags removed from these because these were basically just documentary rallies outlining the Second Amendment and individuals like myself who are Second Amendment supporters that were there at the uh, courthouse downtown Atlanta to just kind of express our thoughts and opinions on the Second Amendment itself. This kind of happened shortly after Sandy Hook, so nerves were quite raw, so we wanted to be respectful and just kind of remind everyone that in the United States, it is legal to have firearms. Now, this is a move by YouTube, who owns the platform and Google and Alphabet, so they can enforce these rules if they choose to. However, this is information that is introduced into their policies in terms of services that may not have been there originally Originally, so I don't know the specifics of what they're going to be looking for or what they're going to be targeting. I will keep an eye on my videos that pertain to the two rallies and I'll leave a link up here in the top corner to one or both of those rallies so you guys can just kind of get an idea of what they were about. So this is kind of late breaking and I just want to bring this to you before we wrap up this video. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this Friday vlog. I want to extend my appreciation and gratitude for all those who have subscribed to the channel, who have participated in these Friday's vlogs. Thank you for your likes, shares, and your comments that you leave down below. Your activity here on the channel is greatly appreciated. And I just wanted to close this off by saying that it's interesting how social media is affecting our society because for thousands of years, essentially, we have always operated from a top down type system of governance. For example, you know, even going back to tribal days and then into monarchs and into our modern government systems where our governments outline those policies and laws to keep law and order. And now with social media, we're seeing that individuals who just have simple access to the internet is affecting our society or can affect our society. And in the case with Scotland's police, they can actually affect individual persons 
by reporting something that might have offended somebody. I can't even begin to imagine this even being in the United States. It's, it's rather a frightening and concerning issue because now we're kind of a bottom-up system of governance in our world. If, it, the, if the regular individual person can just go on the internet and just start issuing out ideologies, philosophies, ethics, morals, and worldviews that concern one person or another, and then you have governments that kind of select what laws are going to enforce, what laws are not going to enforce, and almost kind of a, we'll make up the rules as we go along. I mean, you may not have committed like an actual crime, but because someone might have been upset by it or groups of people might have been upset by it, we're gonna have to take this very seriously and ensure that you don't continue to incite, provoke, or cause some type of disruption in society. Guys, thanks again for all your support, and I will see you next Friday in that vlog.